Ja, besten Dank. Funktioniert das jetzt? Ich habe gar keinen kein Rückkopf mehr dafür. Danke für die einzelnen Worte. Es tut mir leid, wer jetzt hier Many thanks for your introductory words. And I'm very sorry to tell you that uh, Mrs. Daniela Jacob uh, could not come because she takes part in Rotterdam in the Adaptation Future Conference. She is a member of the advisory board and so she uh, asks me to tell you that she apologizes for her absence. So I'm here as a deputy, so to say. Jerix Plus, I do not know why we actually say plus. So we do not say Jerix Plus. So if you saw it in the agenda and in the, the proceedings, CSC was our first abbreviation, but for legal reasons we could not continue to use our first name. That's why we now are called Jerix, but there is no plus. So I know it's about lunchtime and it may be tricky to speak to you now. I hope you can wait so long. If not, please show me the red card as in football. Mr. Krasisch said already a lot about climate change in general and how it should be regarded. I'm going to speak about extreme events. Who are we? How do we work? How are we active within the EU roadmap activities? And we were precisely asked to show you some examples of what we do in our day-to-day uh, -day work. Climate service products, prototypic products that we are develop, and I'm going to present you also the new periodic journal we are publishing. Climate change, the impacts in Europe, we know about the impacts. This is a, a bit older evaluation of the, from the European Environment Agency as to climate change impact, and the report shows uh, quite a good match with the IPCC results, rise in average temperatures in Europe, precipitation, less precipitation in Mediterranean regions, whereas in the continent of Europe we will see an increase in precipitation amounts. The annual Global Risk Report of the World Economic Forum also shows how global economic risks, uh, global climatic risks will increase. And this year's report shows 29 global risks and classifies them by their effect, impact and uh, action. And a lack of adaptation, a failure of climate change mitigation adaptation is considered as the most impactful risk. But the second most risk is extreme events. So, this is a report from uh, the economic teams. It's no NGO ideology or something like this, but there is a, a clearly economic basis. On, uh, findings on the basis of surveys. We know about climate change. We know that impacts are quite important on life and economies. Heat waves, drought waves have already mentioned, have already led to damage and loss of increasing size. I'd like to tell you about the impact to see EU, EU project about quantifying project impacts under two degrees Celsius warming, especially vulnerable regions like Bangladesh, Maldives, Western East Africa, where studied 29 partner institutions worked together on this project, which was closed last September. It was coordinated by by Mrs. Jacob and our institution, and I'd like to refer you to one of our first products, the Impact to C Web Atlas, which summarizes in a convenient and user-friendly manner the findings. I have a brochure with me. I have further material with me. You can ask me. I can refer you to the sources. This approach uh, supports our own key 
activities, but is also meant as an information basis and support for the COP21, where it was used also. The main statements are that two degrees centigrade warming will have an essential impact on a lot of sectors and regions within Europe, and that for understanding these uh, impacts, multi-sectoral analyses will be necessary, and that uh, increase in sea level will be ex will have to be reckoned with, and that we will have a higher frequency and occurrence of extreme events. This is an example of an ex of extreme rainfalls in June 2011 in Hamburg. The risks are that the uh, huge amounts of rainfall of rain Rainwater can not be discharged, led away by the sewer system, and uh, you see metro station, railway underpassages, where suffered a lot from torrential rain at of this era, of this time. Anthropogenic activities like uh, buildings in risk or in uh, flood-prone areas is an aspect, and uh, such events, extreme events, are highly localized and cannot be predicted properly as to the exact site and uh, location. Further, ex exemplary, uh, further examples of damage can be seen, for example, a railway uh, track, an embankment actually slided away in 2013 in May, which cost 700,000 euros for an embankment, a high cost for a small community, but also a heat wave can actually cause a lot of damage in July. 2015 in Essen, this track, bed, this track bed actually melted away with a bituminous uh, clusters uh, hindering tra further traffic. We also have risks for roads and bridges, can also cost lives. In 2013, the asphalt cover of in, in Bavaria melted away so that a motorcycle driver, a biker, actually uh, died in an accident. Damage to infrastructures can also be seen. Examples here, for example, heavy snowfall. If you have uh, the wind conditions favoring the, the windfalls and increasing the loads of icy snow in November 2005, and also five years later in Thuringia, we had such damage in 2005 in Münster, in 2010 in East Thuringia, in Münster in 2005. Several hundred thousands of people actually had a blackout, and a project study work was actually commissioned to come to a method for modeling and recognizing similar weather conditions. As we already heard from the previous uh, speakers, I'd like to refer you to the COP21, you know, in Paris, it was, the emphasis was placed on adaptation measures, so it's, and uh, the final result, the Treaty of Paris actually placed the focus on recognizing now damage due to climate change. This is new. A basic condition for adaptation measures is to convey knowledge into practice. The German federal government actually responded there to very early, and in 2009 at the Helmholtz Center in Geestracht, a service center was set up 
for a project having a life of five years, co-sponsored by the German stra strategy of adaptation to climate change and Helmholtz Society. The Climate Service Center was then or changed in its name, is now Jerix, is now called Jerix, and it's part of the Helmholtz community. We are a team, an interdisciplinary team of uh, scientists and socioeconomics, about f a staff of about 40, with also with young uh, trainees. So we are about 50 people altogether. We are an actual think tank for climate services on a scientific basis we develop services for decision makers in economy, industry and administration, those who actually need support for adaptation to climate change. We have three uh, divisions, so to say, three areas, networking on the one hand, where we, where we actually uh, define the needs of all stakeholders and then we develop, on the base of said information, we develop uh, prototypes of products. This is a central, this is a, so this is a central item supported by networking on the one hand and further training on the other. But networking is an essential point of our work. It's an inter both national and international networking structure where we bundle the comp competencies in climate change and uh, stakeholders are brought together in round tables and exchange of views and further qualification and further training is necessary to uh, guarantee proper working and Mani manipulation of our products. I'd like to draw your attention to the EU Horizon 22 aspects. Uh, there have been a, the new uh, program is EU Horizon 2020, 80 billion of euros for a period of seven years. This is the uh, great, uh, the largest research project. It combines research innovation with a focus on social challenges, and one of those challenges is climate action, environmental resource efficiency and raw materials. And this including development of a market for climate services. In order to show the progress made for in terms of climate service, services, a first workshop was held. 124 uh, practical service providers took part. Mrs. Jacob, our director, had a moderator and speaker role and and, and was integrated into a five people uh, working team in which were, was commissioned to work on the roadmap for climate services in order to have a proper basis for the projects in the, on the European level. Telephone conferences were held and in the end the roadmap was set, was finalized and published in 2015. These are the team members, Roger Street, the rapporteur director of the UK Climate Impacts Program, UK uh, SIP, and Martin Perry from the Imperial College of London, for example, took part. How are climate services defined? The definition is quite broad. Transformation of climate-related data, just to give you the notions, transformation of climate-related data into customized products, counseling on best practices, the development evaluation of solutions that may be of use for the society at large in order to support adaptation, mitigation and disaster risk management. So it's very interesting to see that early 2015, the roadmap started out 
this, this way, the roadmap can uh, download it from the website of the European Commission, by the way. It's a quite broad document, quite comprehensive document. And it was necessary in, in, because that in the public and private sectors, a lot of decision makers are not able to make founded decisions on adaptation to climate changes. In, for reduction in emissions, people, uh, more progress has been made, but uh, adaptation to climate has not yet actually come down to the decision making level. It's, there are quite a lot of gaps, it's fragmented, and climate services were described as demand, con uh, as offer controlled, so portals offering services, so it was not uh, controlled by actual demand, so very important. What is very important is that the providers should actually know the demand and needs of the users and that a transdisciplinary approach should be used and that the product should, if possible, develop together with the user and accompanied by individual ad ad advice and consultation and to play on a level field and use state-of-the-art and to have a high comfort and user-friendliness. So it's a quite long paper, three huge challenges were formulated, a lot of uh, concrete uh, activities. I just, uh, I just show you three out of all offer and demand of the European market for climate services must be understood. That's the target of the implementation of this program with a lot of tenders. A European climate service community ready for the future should be set up, implying involving users, providers, suppliers, innovators and researchers. And apart from the physical, and it's also important to use socio-economic and other non-physical data such as land use should be integrated and what we have already heard this morning that the bandwidth and uncertainties related thereto should also be communicated to the stakeholders and decision makers. So implementation is beyond two 2020, so beyond the current program Horizon 2020, and this agenda will be supported by various other programs. I need to drink. Thank you. Thanks. We in the Climate Service Center work along the line of what I sketched as a roadmap. User-specific transfer of knowledge is our central task. And as already mentioned, we develop customized counseling products for our key customers in industry economics and administration, those who actually have the need to come to adaptation to climate change is an iterative co-development project. We, pre we, we analyze and regionalize the climate data oriented towards the actual user in consideration of the user-specific requirements, and we integrate the practical knowledge. In JEREX 2, we have two uh, global areas. We have fact sheets on the one hand, there's the fact sheet concept. On the second, a modular concept, a kit type concept. So we have developed fact sheets for countries and regions and site characteristic climate fact sheets, as well as climate fact sheets for various sectors which are currently in progress. The climate fact sheets summarize the information 
the, the data for individual regions worldwide, and they also make a statement about bandwidth associated. Starting in 2011, we uh, de co-developed them with the KFW, the Credit Institution for Economic Development, because they need reliable information on what the impact of climate change is on projects, and that is why they asked us to support them. They wish to get information, consistent information, after reliable analysis and accumulation to get the climate data for individual countries or even regions. Burkina Faso, Togo, Ghana, for example, were grouped together in as one region. And the climate fact sheets have also been updated in order to match them with the IPCC assessment report databases. Fifth assessment report. They can be down, the, the data can be downloaded. The 58 climate fact sheets are available for countries or regions, as shown by, in, by the color codes given there. 51 based on global climate models in, in blue, and seven are projections on the basis of regional climate models, only for Europe, orange color. And on the basis of this concept, we've developed we further developed together with BASF for Ludwigshafen as production site. We developed a prototype for site-specific climate fact sheets. This is an example. For example, you can look into that. It's not for uh, taking it along. You can ask me afterwards. I put it here for the moment. Those site-specific climate fact sheets summarize climate-relevant information, climate parameters, important for certain production sites based on the up-to-date uh, Euro projections, uh, European projections. Euro Cordex, maybe not known to all of you, it's a European branch of the World Climate Research Program uh, supported initiative Cordex to foster inter-community cooperation in order for ref in order to refine climate modeling to a lower to a higher resolution. It's about high resolution climate protections for regions. In two weeks there will be a next meeting in Stockholm. Euro Codex is the European branch of the World Cause Initiative. Dr. Jacob and two other colleagues of other universities are the coordinators. A, a lot of high renowned institutions work together climate resolutions with uh, horizontal resolutions of 50 and 12.5 kilometers. This is just it is important to show you what how big the databases is we use, the databases we use. In January in uh, GERIX we had the General Assembly, especially in terms of model simulation and interfaces with users. A small excursion in terms of user-friendly visualization you may have seen already the small thermometer with a scale showing you the robustness and the strength of the signal because it's not so trivial to develop easily understood um, visual presentations being exact in terms of uh, the scientific basis and anyway very comfortable uh, very comfortable to Users. For example, this rain map, which was co-developed with representatives of various German states, Brandenburg, Bremen, Nieder Lower Saxony, uh, Rhineland, Palatinate, and where part of it, Eurocordex, uh, ensembles were used. You see on the left hand side 12 ensemble members were used. You see two types of presentations the average, average 
Precipitation variance is an average value, mean value can also be used for other parameters and also used for other regions, but we tried to come to a highly, uh, to well understandable a presentation. Dark red is a significant uh, decrease and dark blue is signif significant increase and light colors in between uh, say no significant result. Uh, part of it, just to show you how many ensembles actually took part and are sh summarized here. And we also tried another uh, chart a kind of scale chart with a pointer, where the pointer, is a, a full line or broken line, shows, shows coherent uh, increases when pointing to the top and matching and decrease when pointing to, to the bottom and also to the right. This could be a rather useful uh, chart in order to allow decision makers to have an information at first glance. So we get back to the fact sheets concept. There was another project together with the German Development Bank. It's called Focus Paper, and this gives background information about scientific topics, which are very important for project managers and technical specialists of uh, this German Development Bank, and so we support them for financing uh, the projects and the climate feasibility studies, and so focus papers are available. I think I brought one along too about the global sea level rise and regional sea level rise in Southeast Asia. And now the modular concept, so these are counseling uh, modules, so maybe I speed up a little bit, I'm not sure how much time is left. Beratungsmodule zur Integration des so Themas Klimawandel in den Strategien für Städte und Gemeinden für Cities und Municipalities und auch für also for decision makers in companies. And uh, when we Städte, wie wir get wissen, uh, to the cities, Rolle, uh, ein, so cities play a specific role uh, under climate change, but mehr mehr uh, uh, most of the greenhouse uh, gases uh, are emitted in cities, but they are also very sensitive to the consequences of uh, climate change, and so there are bigger challenges in cities and heat waves and heavy rain uh, events. There will be uh, stress on the people living in the cities, but also on the infrastructure in the cities. And so they have to adapt to climate change. And many measures can be in conflict uh, to other future measures. So the change in uh, age structure. So what you can see here is uh, an image from the climate focus paper for cities. So there are different uh, drivers uh, with a climatic background or not climatic background that play a role here. So the future uh, quality of life uh, can be adjusted in a positive way. And so we have to work with this. We know the adjustment scores for this. Everybody knows this when you look around in your neighborhood. So there should be more green areas, more water areas, or uh, building material which are good for the climate, so people know about this, but there are still differences between theory and practice. And in practice, we see that there is not a universal method how a city can adapt to the consequences of climate change, because every city is different. 
and that's why we made up a kit of 11 different modules for the most important topics for cities. And at the beginning of the counseling, there is an analysis of the site characteristics in order to uh, adjust the modules to the different demands. And then by the different modules that are picked, uh, we, they can be matched uh, to the demands of the city. And uh, these are components of the planning in the city. It's also possible to have, have the whole process from uh, the supply of the climate data to adaption uh, measures. They can be uh, accompanied scientifically. So this is an example for the city of Kiel. So you can move from the left to the right, so the specific characteristics of the city of Kiel was shown, but um, they needed a hotspot map, a so-called hotspot map. So in Kiel there will be flood risks and risk of uh, heavy rain. And so Garrix, together with their partners, uh, generated these hotspot maps and they used uh, data from MEMO, for example. And a further step on the right hand side, together with the city itself, uh, we uh, created compensation methods, measures. Uh, in order to fight against the climate change, for example, special uh, trees that are planted in parks and so on. In order to further develop uh, the climate protection concepts, I won't talk about this uh, in detail, but it's very important for all solution approaches. You think of climate change and climate protection and adaption uh, together. So, and very important is uh, improvement of heat insulation in buildings. But there are also consequences for for companies, heat waves, drought periods, storms, uh, the rise of sea level can change uh, the added value chain of companies regarding production sites, but there can be also opportunities for companies, economic opportunities, and so we built up a kit with seven different modules uh, for companies. And again, in this image, you can see the development. So the foundation two degrees, German companies for climate protection was asking uh, for getting this topic of adaption to climate change uh, into the companies. And so uh, our service center was uh, involved in this and we uh, tried to have this topic also in companies. An analysis tool was developed to detect the need for adaptation to, adaptation to climate change. And there were 35 interviews with decision makers of eight member companies. Uh, from this foundation and they were put into practice and tested, for example, companies like Puma, Otto Group, Telekom, Schwäbisch Hall and so on. And the result of this uh, procedure was the idea for a product, a climate stress test, uh, to enable decision makers to know the influence uh, of climate change into their uh, companies. So that's almost the end of my uh, lecture. There are some, I have some examples here. When you are interested in the products or when this was uh, too fast, I have some printouts of a website, but you can also see the link here where we describe uh, these uh, selected products. 
And I showed you only the ones yeah, in the orange also type, but we have different reports. We have a leaflet, health and climate change, and uh, different products that you can find on this website. And you can also get it from me directly if you want to. And at the end, I want to uh, have an advert for a new leaflet, which is called Climate Services. So this was made by Gerix together with the publisher Elsevier. So chief editor is uh, Mrs. Daniela Jakob, and this journal is for sign and also for stakeholders in praxis, decision makers. So every article has a summary for decision makers. It's open access. Uh, the first edition was published. And this journal is also uh, shown, presented uh, by Mrs. Daniela Jakob at the conference what she is visiting. Thank you very much for your patience and if you have questions.